So in this world, especially nowadays, uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of unity, right? There's different religions, different philosophies, different ways of life, but uh, since the days of old, there is one thing we can all agree on, and that is that the video sequencer in Blender is absolute dog shit. Um, in fact, in some ways, it's actually worse than dog shit, because at least with dog shit, you see it at least once a day on the sidewalk, and with the video sequencer, you open it once every six months and tell yourself, oh yes, uh, that's why I've been avoiding it. <laughs> so you see dog poop more frequently. Anyways, uh, in this tutorial, we're going to improve upon uh, one of the issues that this still has because, you know, the video sequencer just doesn't have any features. Um, and namely, I'm talking about transitions. If we were to look at transitions, we go to add, uh, we go to fade, which are the transitions. <laughs> you can see we have fade in and out, fade in, fade out, blah, blah, blah. In other words, there's one transition called fade. And uh, just like a dude writing an essay trying to hit the word count, they're like, oh, let's make uh, five of these. <laughs> we'll call it five different transitions, right? Um, so I'm going to show you how to make any transition transition you want as long as you can make it in the node editor uh, you can do it here so this one I have this fading transition but you can do whatever you want so how is it that I've done this how have I uh, kind of fixed the shit that is <laughs> the video sequencer find out uh, right now so I'm gonna start off with a uh, fresh blender project 2.92 I don't give a fuck what you're using um, <laughs> I think you can go pretty far back and it's still gonna be compatible okay um, so in this part of the tutorial what I'm gonna be doing is making the actual transition and then you know we bring it over to the video sequencer so uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to make a camera. It's going to be above the plane and on this plane. Let's go to the camera view. Um, on this plane, what we're going to be doing is making our transition in the node editor, like I've said now <laughs> 10 times. So make sure your plane is at least outside of the bounds of the camera view so that, you know, you don't have like any empty space. So, you know, I guess the closer the better, but anything relatively close is fine. Uh, once you have that plane, we go to shading, uh, we go back to our camera view, rendered view, material, you know the drill. And here's where it gets a tiny bit confusing. And I just want to reemphasize anything you can do in this node editor can become a transition. So you don't have to copy the exact same one I'm doing. Uh, the one I'm going to do is kind of like the fading uh, circle with the noise and stuff like that, because it looks cool and it's pretty fucking simple to do. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to look at the object coordinates. Um, those with the trained eye can already see that it's stretched out, but let's say that you can't see that yet. So let's just proceed as normal. Uh, we're going to use the object coordinates. We want to turn this into a circle. So like always you use vector math. And I say like always, as if you use nodes as much as me, you probably don't, <laughs> uh, but just try to follow along. Uh, we set this to length. Uh, the reason we do that is uh, the vectors that are given by these object coordinates, uh, if I can cycle back to it, um, each of them has a magnitude, a scale, a strength, or whatever, and that is determined by the length, where in the middle, it's the vector 0, 0, 0, so we get black, and then radially outwards, we get white. Um, already, you can kind of see, and I'm just going to emphasize it a bit more with some filtering, like a greater than, uh, you can see this gives an oval, even though this equation expressed in nodes should give a circle. Uh, this is because, again, we stretched out the object coordinates, right? Uh, if you want your rectangle, your, your plane to be a rectangle, but still want a circle, easy fix, control A, um, apply, I think scale, but really just all transforms works as well. Um, and now it's kind of assumed that, uh, yes, the dimensions are weird, but the scale is now one, 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 uh, whereas before it was messed up. Okay. Uh, okay, this doesn't matter. We just need to get to the transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to subtraction so we get more of a fading effect and we can flip this to have it in the opposite direction. Uh, we, the reason it grows radially is because we have a radial gradient and then we're subtracting some amount where some uh, values are sent to black or negative land. Forget about it, okay? Uh, we have a basic setup, and now we just want to distort it, right? Uh, distortion is usually brought about by some kind of randomness, like noise texture. Uh, the way I like to mix these together, since Arendelle taught me the secret ways and passed the scrolls on to me, and I have uh, kind of forsaken the religion <laughs> and just kind of shared the scrolls with everybody. Sorry, Aaron. Um, you just mix these two together. So what I've done is I've mixed the noise uh, with the object coordinates. You can see it messes everything up. Um, and long story short, basically, on average, we are adding or mixing, but in some sense, adding a noise that on X, Y, and Z, the average value is 0.5. So it's going to be shifted over by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right? Um, not necessarily every point, but on average. Uh, a way to fix this is you could do a bit of math, or you could just set this to linear light. Uh, this is what the scrolls uh, uh, basically set on them. I, I, I was expecting some religious gospel, but not really. Um, you can see now our noise is centered, and uh, we can scale, and it does the thing. Uh, to make this look better, a couple things. You want to up the detail. That's going to give it that crispness. Uh, second of all, you can pick your scale, and that's going to be like how uh, chaotic uh, do you want this to be. I kind of like one that isn't too chaotic, so I keep it low. You also have roughness for a bit of, you know, I don't know, <laughs> roughness, and then a tiny bit of distortion. Why not? 
Okay, uh, so now we have a basic setup where all we have to do at any point is just kind of slide this up. And the way you want to think about this really is that white is going to reveal our new footage and black is going to keep our old footage. And this is the way uh, that this is going to be a transition. Okay, we're defining where one footage goes on top of the other. And this is the main insight. Uh, by the way, you can also increase the factor of this linear light. And that's just going to make the noise have more of a contribution. Okay, um, either way, how do we set this up to be a transition? Well, we need a couple things. First of all, we need our timeline. Um, and here's kind of where uh, this method sucks. <laughs> and I wish that uh, Blender would have a better kind of video sequencer with the uh, transitions and stuff uh, we kind of have to bake in how long we want this transition to be right we can't just say on the fly oh i want it to be twice as slow or whatever uh, you have to know from the beginning how long you want it to be so mine will be 80 frames let's say uh, but again you need to plan ahead um, until you know somebody develops a different method okay um, so pick your frame rate, pick your uh, length of whatever your frame rate should be matching at least roughly. I think mine's 59.94, but I'll keep it at 60. Uh, it should at least be roughly matching uh, your footage frame rate. Otherwise, it's going to be weird. Your transition is going to be, you know, temporally more dense than anything else. Um, only other thing you need, color management. Make sure this is set to standard. Why? Uh, because Filmic has more dynamic range and it's great. But for this, we literally only care about um, each pixel. Is it zero? one or something in between. That's what standards for. Uh, Filmic will actually show you stuff uh, beyond that, which we're not interested in, okay? Um, so on frame one, what we need is we need nothing, and I can guarantee you that number is zero. Zero minus whatever is gonna be negative or zero, so that's perfect. And then on the last frame, so I'm just going to the last frame with the end of our transition, I'm gonna keyframe. And by the way, the way I make a keyframe is I kind of pick a value and then click I while hovering over it. Um, so I'm gonna have it zero. And then on frame 80, we keep scrolling up until we think it's done. And uh, the reason we do standard here, as you can tell, um, originally you might have thought that it was done, but really you can see there's a tiny bit left over. And a great way to check this, by the way, is you just add a, a greater than, greater than one after this. Um, and this is gonna show you the areas that are not completely done with the transition, right? They're not fully one, uh, the other clip. Um, so you just wanna keep increasing this until there is 100% white, and you need to be uh, certain of that. Now, I imagine the number's probably three. No, it's slightly bigger. But it's always best to, like, overshoot by just a bit, okay? Uh, so what do we have so far? What we have now is I removed the greater than. That was just kind of like a litmus test, a little dip your toes. I don't know. Uh, it was just to see. Uh, but now you can see with just our raw transition, uh, which, by the way, we can change at any time. You just save this one file, bring down the distortion. Maybe you don't want any or just less distortion. Uh, you can change this at any time, lower the detail, whatever it is that you're interested in. Um, this is what our transition is going to look like again. You have to imagine originally we have one clip and then as the white emerges, uh, we get to the uh, second clip. Okay. Again, make sure this is standard or it is not going to work. Okay. <laughs> Just trust me on this. Okay. Uh, once we have finished our transition, all we have to do is export it, and then we're going to use it over at the video sequencer. Uh, so in coding, I use MP4. You can use whatever the fuck. I just do not care. <laughs> High quality, and then we are going to... I need to I need to delete this folder every time I save anything in Blender, and it's not just recently. It's been here for months. Spiders or, like, shrimp or something, my face and, like, an egg made of paper. I need to get rid of this. It's spooky. Um, I'm going to save this as a uh, transition, okay? Uh, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it... Uh, fixing video sequencer garbage land. So creative. <laughs> um, pick an output directory. Make sure it's a video. Or you could do it as an image sequence. It doesn't matter. Although ideally you make it a video. Makes everything easier. Uh, make sure all your settings are good. And rendering with EV works absolutely fine. So um, good thing about this is once you make your transition, we, we can uh, use it however many times we want and however many projects we want, etc. Uh, because uh, the transition information is baked into this video, okay? And if you can't tell, I'm just very good at pretending to say something meaningful as I'm waiting for the render <laughs> to finish because I hate cutting, it's just extra work. Uh, but point is, you want to wait for this to be completed. It's going to be 80 frames at whatever frame rate. I'm very good at this. And boom, okay, we can continue. Whew, I was yeah, starting to sweat a little, you know. I have only white shirts nowadays, so those sweat stains are getting insane because it's the most visible shirt you can have for sweat stains. 
What was I talking about? Okay, we have our transition. So now let's uh, start a new blend uh, file. You can save this if you want to. Um, I'm going to um, link this one in the uh, Patreon. So, you know, if you're a patron, go get it. And I'll also do an exclusive tutorial on, other, on another transition. But moving on, um, just giving you the information, we're going to start a new blend file. Uh, this one's going to use the video editing um, kind of preset. By the way, it's control N to do this video editing. Uh, this is just going to set it up so we already have all the windows we need. You could do it manually, but whatever. It's faster. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import in two different uh, movie clips. It doesn't really matter. And uh, at this point, it's no surprise. I'm working on a mustache tutorial, so I'm fine uh, showing some of this footage. <laughs> even though I used it in the previous CG Matter tutorial, whatever. Um, we're going to import in uh, one piece of footage. And by the way, if you're really annoyed by... Here's another issue <laughs> uh, with the video sequencer. The fucking loading takes forever. These uh, orange uh, little bars are where uh, it's cached. And you can see it hops for some reason, right? Uh, but we need to cache this on the fly, and I don't want to prefetch... Or I do want to prefetch, <laughs> uh, but I don't want to proxy every time. A quick way to fix this, hit N, go to View. It's going to give you a bunch of properties and enable prefetch frames, which should be enabled by D Default. And this is just going to prefetch frames, um, you know, past the playhead um, automatically. So here's our first piece of footage, fine. And we want it to transition to, not using the garbage fades, uh, transition to, I guess, anything else. So I think in the original I used this one, but it's kind of arbitrary, so I'll use this one. Um, by the way, this uh, green clip, if you're not familiar with the video sequencer, it's audio. I'm just going to get rid of it. We don't need it. And uh, for this clip, again, prefetching is the reason why this is so smooth. Um, I'm just gonna like go here once I actually start the motion because I'm like, oh, I'm hitting the record button, making sure everything's fine, whatever. Uh, hit K uh, when you're on the frame you want to split. Uh, it's kind of like a knife tool uh, to separate. I'm gonna delete this, go to the first frame, and then G to move this over uh, to, I guess maybe not the first frame. I guess we wanted to do the transition like partway through. Uh, so at this point, what we have is footage, and then it goes to different footage, right? And we can do the garbage fades, or we can use our new transition. Uh, to do this, what we are going to do is, I think it doesn't really matter what order we do this in, as long as this video is on top of that video, right? Because, uh, you know, you want one to transition into the other. Uh, we are going to add in our movie. Which movie? We are going to add in the uh, transition we made. Of course, I made one before this, but let's just use the uh, new one. And that's going to automatically import here, okay? Now, technically, uh, we do want this to define the transition between this footage and this footage, but we don't want to see it. So H to hide, um, it's going to exist, and it's important that in that this information is here, uh, but we don't actually see it. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, what we do is you can see with the second clip, we can do kind of blending and stuff like this if we bring down the opacity, even though it takes forever. Let's do 0.5. You can kind of see both, right? Uh, we need some way to create a mask or something like it or some kind of blending mode, whatever. Uh, we need some kind of mask uh, to, you know, use this footage from one to the other. How would we do this? Well, I kind of already gave away the keyword modifiers. You add in a mask modifier. You know, it, Video Sequencer has no features, but thank fucking God, okay, that it has the uh, mask modifier. Otherwise, we would be in deep trouble. You could do some blending mode magic, but uh, this is the way to go. So the mask is basically going to be kind of like in three dimensions or in compositing, right? Um, it's going to define where this video is going to be seen. Uh, we want it to be shown uh, with a strip, which strip our fixing video sequencer or whatever the render was called, right? And you can see what this is going to do. And by the way, I don't think this is dependent on the position of the transition. I, I mean, even if it's hidden, you can move it anywhere, right? It's more dependent on uh, where the beginning of your footage is. So automatically, it's going to transition inwards. Um, we are going to mask uh, this. And what was the point? Uh, the point is now we have a kind of alpha channel right? Uh, so our second video is, uh, you know, it's transparent in the background, which leads to an interesting que question once this uh, prefetches. Uh, why is it that we have footage and then it kind of cuts to transparency, right? Uh, you'd think that, you know, if there was transparency, it would kind of show what is under it, okay? Um, and that that's a good question. And this is where blending modes come in. Um, if you don't know blending modes, well, you know, there's a lot to talk about here. <laughs> so I can't cover everything, but I can just give you some general stuff. Uh, this is the kind of quick mathematical expression uh, that one is laid over the other, right? And if we change this to different stuff, you can see we're kind of getting stuff that blends together. Um, although when the transition's complete, it doesn't look quite right, and that's because the blending mode isn't the one we would want, right? Uh, the blending mode we want, just like in uh, compositing, and it's luckily here, um, alpha over. What it means is put one over the other using the alpha, uh, which is <laughs> exactly the scenario we've set up. So let's let this prefetch. Cool. And now you can see we get one transitioning into the other. Again, it's the same thing as we had before with the transparency, uh, but now using the alpha over blend mode on the um, 
the thing we're transitioning into uh, one is now on top of the other. And again, I think the way this works with the mask modifier is it kind of applies this uh, clip we made as a mask starting at the beginning. Uh, so now if we were to move this, uh, technically I think the transition should still work now, although now it's going to start here instead of here. So let's see. No, does it start? Uh, I guess it starts wherever we place it initially. So, you know, just a guy giving a tutorial, not knowing much about the video sequencer. But let me tell you, I think this is the first tutorial about making custom transitions. So I don't really know. If somebody knows in the comments, tell me. Maybe it's on the initial position, or maybe you can pick like a start frame and stuff like this with the time. Uh, that, would, that might be likely. And then you can kind of pick a start point for all this, whatever. Uh, but point is, uh, anything you can make in the node editor. So, you know, like the uh, clip that we made. And let me just unhide it so we can see it. The clip that we made, whatever. Uh, you can use it as a transition as long as you use the mask modifier, the alpha over. <laughs> and then somebody better figure out how to pick the start point of this. Should be obvious. Anyways, uh, that's the tutorial. We fixed the video sequencer. Yay, applause, applause. Um, and what is this on the right? Is it, I've already used the grocery list uh, joke. Well, what's another? Is it a list of my enemies? No, it's not a list of my enemies. It's a list of patrons. So uh, here are the credits of the people who have joined the Patreon for both uh, default Cuban CG matter. Uh, did they do it out of the goodness of their heart? I like to think so. <laughs> uh, but wh 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 why did they actually? Well, maybe part of that. But also, um, Patreon patrons get a bunch of, uh, you know, exclusives that uh, you might be interested in. Uh, first of all, they get blend files like this one. I'm going to make some transitions and stuff like that uh, that you can download automatically and, you know, change on the fly since it's procedural. And if you become a patron, any blend file I've ever uploaded, you can download right off the bat, right? You become a patron, hundreds of blend files at your disposal. Uh, second of all, exclusive tutorials um, about a whole bunch of stuff. Usually they're kind of like in-depth tutorial series on the CG Matter videos, uh, so they tend to be longer. Uh, those exist. They don't exist on either channel, but they do over on Patreon. Additionally, they're getting Discord benefits. They're getting early access, um, especially nowadays. I'm uploading tutorials quite early, uh, so they can see it a couple days early. If you're like, oh, how did somebody comment 15 hours ago? That's how. <laughs> um, what, what else do they get? I think that's the essence of it. Sometimes behind the scenes and the cringy play Patreon uh, newsletter, although that's a uh, hella cringe. Uh, that all exists over on Patreon. If you're interested, you probably would have gone over there by now, but uh, links in the description. Go check it out, but otherwise, uh, you've already learned the stuff in this tutorial. It's available for free, so I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, video sequencer, please, developers, fix it, okay? <laughs> I like I, I can't really describe what's wrong with it. It's more like the absence of everything uh, that's wrong with it. I know it's not the core like feature blunder, uh, but it would be dope, and I know it's currently a project, and there's add-ons, like there's something called like super video sequencer or something. There's add-ons to fix this, but it would be nice if uh, whatever, right? Um, so, yeah. That, that's the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. See ya.